My name is Diane Ray, and this is my daughter, Taryn. I was 22 years old, and I was in the shower one morning, um, and I blacked out. And when I came to, I felt that my heart was racing. The ambulance arrived, and they had to stop my heart and restart it in the driveway. I was diagnosed with supraventricular tachycardia. Taryn had no insurance at that point, so I tried to find her insurance. But she, at that point, had a pre-existing condition, and she was turned down everywhere. And she was accumulating bills through emergency, the emergency room visit and the doctor's visits. When we got the word that the health care initiative passed, I burst into tears. And uh, the best, the best news that we could have gotten. They rushed through with the paperwork so that I was able to have surgery. Because President McEntee led the charge for the health care initiative, obviously it was a blessing to my family because without that, I don't know where Taryn would be today. I've been a correctional officer, yeah, virtually my whole life. June of 2005, a fellow correctional officer, Cotton Morgan, was on a transportation detail taking an inmate to court, and as they left the courthouse, uh, his girlfriend attempted an escape, and uh, she shot Cotton in the process of doing so, and that uh, shot uh, was a fatal injury. This is a tragedy that didn't have to happen because he was shot in the lower chest area, and, and had he been wearing a bulletproof vest, uh, his death could probably have been avoided. We've always uh, asked for a bulletproof vest. However, the Department of Correction always cited a, a lack of fund. President McEntee brought a lot of public pressure on the department. Uh, not long after that, uh, they started fitting our transportation officer with vest. And I think more than just the bulletproof vest uh, was the actions that he gave to help Cotton Morgan's wife to, to obtain the benefits that she was due and, and also honored her at the public safety conference that year. And people came up and, and offered their condolences to her and she said, you know, this is just like a family and these people really care. My name is Frank Sherman. This is my wife, Lauren. Hurricane Irene had already gone by a week before actually raised up most of the water levels and all the rivers saturated the ground. And then a week later, the rain was really, really bad. And the sheriff's department was driving around telling people that they had to evacuate their houses. I didn't know I could move that fast to, you know, get things packed up. We got, you know, emptied the main living level of the floor upstairs and into the U-Haul really quick. And when we left, I was, you know, this is it. My grandfather owned the house. My father owned the house, I owned the house, our children, and at this point our grandchildren. That's five generations in the same home. After the flood and everything, my president, Mark Driscoll, came to me and said that ASNU was offering assistance to people. This was, for us, a big help because it could pay for the extra things without us having to go in debt. That morning I responded from the academy in between the time that the first building collapsed and the second building was still standing. When I got there, there was chaos. The rubble and the fires and the ground so hot, you just had to stand back and there was nothing you really could do. And 9-11 went from a rescue operation to a recovery operation very fast. I knew that we didn't have the proper respiratory protection, the proper personal protective equipment that you would need to be able to work in a site like this, and I knew the consequences would be great. Cheryl McEntee and the people of ASME were up there fighting with us so we could get medical monitoring and treatment that till this day, people are still suffering. If not for those programs, I believe that many other members would have passed. I've never had a big brother until I met Gerald McEntee. I'd like to tell you, you were a blessing. If you know, you were not by our side as our big brother, all the things that we accomplished to get personal protective equipment and the medical monitoring and treatment that these members are still using right now wouldn't exist.